हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी विल लर्न अबाउट माइक्रोबायल और इंडस्ट्रियल बायोटेक्नोलॉजी इन दिस वी विल कवर अबाउट बायो प्रोसेस और फॉर्मेंटेशन टेक्नोलॉजी डाउनस्ट्रीम प्रोसेसिंग एंजाइम टेक्नोलॉजी बायो ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन माइक्रोबायल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक सॉल्वेंट्स माइक्रोबायल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक एसिड्स माइक्रोबायल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ऑर्गेनिक एसिड्स माइक्रोबायल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ एंटीबायोटिक्स माइक्रोबायल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ एमिनो एसिड्स माइक्रोबायल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ विटामिन माइक्रोबायल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ फूड्स एंड बीवरेजेस सिंगल सेल प्रोटीन एंड मशरूम्स पॉलीसाकराइड्स पॉलीहाइड्रोक्सी अल्कानोइड्स एंड लिपिड्स बायोमास एंड बायो एनर्जी माइक्रोबायल माइनिंग एंड मेटल बायोटेक्नोलॉजी लेट्स नो अबाउट बायो प्रोसेस और फॉर्मेंटेशन टेक्नोलॉजी इन दिस वीडियो विल कवर दिस टॉपिक फॉर्मेंटेशन टेक्नोलॉजी सो वर्ड द वेरी वर्ड फॉर्मेंटेशन मीन्स ऑरिजिनेट्स फ्रॉम ए लैटिन वर्ब फॉर बियर हु इज लैटरली मीन्स टू बॉयल ड्यूरिंग द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ आल्कोहल द फर्स्ट ट्रूली इंडस्ट्री इंडस्ट्रियलाइज प्रोसेस द गैस बबल्स ऑफ कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड अपियर एट द सर्फेस टू ऑफ द बॉयलिंग लिक्विड फॉर्मेंटेशन इन ए स्ट्रिक्ट सेंस इज ए बायोलॉजिकल प्रोसेस दैट ऑकर्स इन द एबसेंस ऑफ ऑक्सीजन दैट इज अन एरोपिक दिस डेफिनेशन हाउ एवर इज नो मोर वैलिड सिंस द टर्म इंडस्ट्रियल फॉर्मेंटेशन इज नाउ यूज फॉर इन लार्ज स्केल कल्टिवेशन ऑफ माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स इवन दो मोस्ट ऑफ देम आर एरोपिक दैट मीन्स यूज ऑक्सीजन बायो प्रोसेस टेक्नोलॉजी वट डू मीन बाई बायो प्रोसेस टेक्नोलॉजी बायो प्रोसेस टेक्नोलॉजी इज ए मोर डिसेंट यूसेज टू रिप्लेस फॉर्मेंटेशन टेक्नोलॉजी बायो प्रोसेसिंग ब्रॉडली इन्वॉल्व ए मल्टीट्यूड ऑफ एंजाइम कैटालाइज रिएक्शंस कैरिड आउट बाय लिविंग सेल्स फॉर इंडस्ट्रियल पर्पोजेस सम वर्कर्स प्रीफर टू यूज बायो प्रोसेस टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर इंडस्ट्रियल यूज ऑफ हाइयर प्लांट एंड एनिमल सेल्स वाइल फॉर्मेंटेशन टेक्नोलॉजी इन कन्फाइन is confined to microbial use this democracy is however not very rigid by process or fermentation technology is very widely exploited for industrial applications now let's know about the fermenters or bioreactors the heart of fermentation technology is the fermenter that is or we can say bioreactor A bioreactor is basically a device in which the organisms, that means cells, are cultivated and motivated to form the desired product. It is a contaminant containment system designed to give right evening environment for optimal growth and metabolic activity of the organism. A fermenter usually refer to the containment system for the cultivation of prokaryotic cells that is bacteria fungi while a bioreactor grows the eukaryotic cells that is mammalian or insect traditional fermenters are open vats made up of wood or slate in recent years stainless steel bioreactors are in use a high quality stainless steel that do not corrode corrode or leak toxic metals into the growth medium is used the size of a bioreactor is highly variable ranging from 20 liters to 250 million liters or even more now let's know the types of bioreactors continuous uh, based on the design of bioreactors they can be grouped into various types let's know about the types first is continuous triad tank bioreactors second is bubble column bioreactors third is air lift bioreactors fourth is fluid fluidized bed bioreactor this is packed bed bioreactors sixth is photo bioreactors in all the types in all types of bioreactors the ultimate aim is to ensure that all parts of the system are subjected to the same condition now let's know about the continuous stirred tank bioreactors a continuous stirred tank bioreactor consists of a cylindrical vessel with motor driven center central shaft that supports one or more alligators 
the shaft uh, the shaft is fitted at the bottom of the bi reactor the number of the impellers is various and is variable and depends on the size of the bi reactor that is height to diameter ratio referred to as a aspect ratio the aspect ratio of a steel tank bi reactor is usually between 3 to 5 however for animal cell culture applications the aspect ratio is less than 2 the diameter of the impeller is usually 1/3 of the vessel diameter the distance between two impellers is approximately 1.2 impeller diameter different types of impellers are used are in use in steel tank bi reactors or in short steel tank reactors the air is added to the culture medium under pressure through a device called spargers sparge the sparger may be a ring with many holes or a tube with a single orifice the sparger along distribution may system throughout the vessel the bubbles generated by sparger are broken down to smaller ones by impellers and dispersed throughout the medium this enables the creation of a uniform and homogeneous environment throughout the bio reactor advantages of strs there are many advantages of strs over other types this include the efficient gas transfer to growing cells good mixing of the contents and flexible operating conditions besides the commercial availability of the bi reactors now let's know about the bubble column bi reactors the bubble column bi reactor the air or gas is introduced at the base of the column through the through perforated pipes or plates or metal microporous spurgers the flow rate of the air or gas influences the performance factors that is oxygen transfer mixing the bubble column bi reactors may be fitted with perforated plates to improve performance the vessel used for bubble column bi reactors is usually cylindrical with an aspect ratio of 4 to 6 that is height to diameter ratio now let's know about the air lift bi reactors in the air lift bi reactors the medium of the vessel is divided into two interconnected zones by by means of a baffle or draft tube in one of the two zones referred to a raising the air gas is pumped the other zone that receives no gas is the down comers the dispersed flow dispersion flows of the riser zone while the down flow occurs in the down comer there are two types of air lifting air lift bi reactors first is internal loop second is external loop in a, let's know about the internal loop air lift bi reactors this is, it has a single container with a central draft tube that creates interior liquid circulation channels these bi reactors are simple in design with volume that and circulation at a fixed rate for fermentation now let's know about the external loop air lift bi reactor it possesses an external loop so that the liquid circulates through separate indip- uh, independent channels these reactors can be suitably modified to suit the requirements of different fermentations in general the air lift bi reactors are more efficient than bubble columns particularly for more denser suspensions of microorganisms it uh, this is mainly because these bi reactors the mixing of the content contents is better compared to bubble columns air lift bi reactors are commonly employed for the aerobic pipe processing technology they ensure a controlled liquid flow in a recycle system by pumping during to during to high efficiency air lift bi reactors are sometimes referred that is example methanol production wastewater treatment single cell protein production in general the performance of the air lift bi reactors is dependent on the pumping or pumping of air and the liquid circulation now let's know about the 
टू स्टेज एयरलिफ्ट बाय रिएक्टर्स टू स्टेज एयरलिफ्ट बाय रिएक्टर्स आर यूज फॉर द टेम्परेचर इन टेम्परेचर डिपेंडेंट फॉर्मेशन ऑफ फॉर प्रोडक्ट्स ग्रोइंग सेल्स फ्रॉम द फ्रॉम वन बायो रिएक्टर आर फॉर्म्ड इन टू अनदर बायो रिएक्टर एट टेम्परेचर फोर्टी टू डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड देर इज ए नेसेसिटी फॉर द टू स्टेज एयर लिफ्ट बायो रिएक्टर सिंस इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू राइज द टेम्परेचर क्विकली फ्रॉम थर्टी परसेंट थर्टी डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड टू फोर्टी टू डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड इन द सेम वेसेल इज वन ऑफ द बायो रिएक्टर्स इज फिटेड विथ भाल्स and they are connected by a transfer tube and pump the cells are grown in first bioreactor and the bio process proper takes place in the second reactor tower bioreactors a press let's know about the tower bioreactors the pressure cycle fermenter with large dimension constitutes a tower bioreactor a high hydrostatic pressure generated at the bottom of the reactor increases the solubility of oxygen in the medium at the top of the riser reduces pressure and facilitates expulsion of carbon dioxide the medium flows back in the down comers and completes the cycle the advantage with tower bio reactor is that it has high aeration capacities without having moving parts Now let's know about fluidized bio bed bio reactors. Fluidized bed bio reactor is comparable to bubble column bio reactor except the top position is expanded to reduce the velocity of the fluid. The design of the fluidized bio reactors is such that the solids are retained in the bio in the reactor while the liquid flows out. These bio reactors are suitable for the use to carry out reactions involving lip uh, involving involving fluid sus- suspended biocatalysts such as immobilized enzymes immobilized cells microbial flux for an efficient cooperation of fluidized beds gas is purged to create a suitable gas liquid solid fluid bed it is also necessary to ensure that the suspended solid particles are not too light or too dense and they are in a good suspended state the recycling of the liquid is important to maintain continuous contact between the reaction content, contents and bio catalyst this enables good efficiency of bio processing now let's know about the packed packed bed bio reactors the a bed of solid particles with bio, bio catalyst on or within the matrix of solids packed in a column constitutes a packed bed bio reactor the solids used may be porous or non porous gels and they may be com- compressible or rigid in nature a nutrient growth flows continuously over the immobilized bio catalyst the products obtained in the packed bed bio reactor are released into the fluid and removed while the flow of the fluid can be upward or downward down flow under gravity is preferred the concentration of the nutrients can be increased by increasing the flow rate of the nutrient growth because of poor mixing it is rather difficult to control the ph of packed bio reactors by the addition of acid or alkali however these bio reactors are preferred for bio processing technology involving product inhibited reactions the packed bed bio reactors do not allow accumulation of the products to any significant extent now let's know about photo bio reactors there are these are the bio reactors specialized for fermentation that can be carried out either by exposing to sunlight or artificial illumination since artificial illumination is expensive only the out only the outdoor photo bio reactors are preferred certain important compounds are produced by employing photo bio reactors example beta carotene asthaxazin asthaxanthin they are made up of glass or more commonly transparent plastic the array of tubes or 
फ्लाट पैनल कंस्टिट्यूट लाइट रिसीविंग सिस्टम्स दैट इज सोलार रिसीवर्स द कल्चर कैन बी सर्कुलेटेड थ्रू द सोलार रिसीवर्स बाय मेथड सच एज यूजिंग सेंट्रीफिकल पम्प्स और एयरलिफ्ट पम्प्स इट इज एसेंशियल दैट द सेल्स आर इन कंटिन्यूस सर्कुलेशन विदाउट फॉर्मिंग सेडिमेंट्स फर्दर एडिक्वेट पेनिटेशन ऑफ सनलाइट शुड भी मेंटेन द ट्यूब शुड भी शुड ऑल्सो भी कूल्ड टू प्रिवेंट राइज इन टेम्परेचर फोटो रिएक्टर्स आर यूजली ऑपरेटेड इन ए कंटिन्यूस मोड एट ए टेम्परेचर इन द रेंज ऑफ फाइव टू फोर्टी डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड माइक्रो अलगल एंड सियानो बैक्टेरिया आर नॉर्मली यूज ऑर्गेनिजम्स ग्रो ड्यूरिंग डे लाइट वाइल द प्रोडक्ट्स आर प्रोड्यूस्ड ड्यूरिंग नाइट नाउ लेट्स नो अबाउट द कन्वेंशनल ए कन्वेंशनल बायो रिएक्टर रिएक्टर्स कॉमन फीचर्स व्हाट आर द कॉमन फीचर्स शुड बी इनसाइड द कन्वेंशनल बायो रिएक्टर्स सो द मोस्ट कॉमन फीचर्स ऑफ द टिपिकल बायो रिएक्टर वी विल नाउ डिस्कस कन्वेंशनल बायो रिएक्टर्स आर सिलिंड्रिकल स्पेसल्स विथ domed top and bottom the reaction vessel surrounded by a jacket is provided with a sparger at the bottom through which air can be introduced air means carbon dioxide and nh3 for ph maintenance should be introduced the agitation shaft is connected to a mentor at the bottom the reaction vessel has side port साइड पोर्ट्स फॉर पी एच टेम्परेचर एंड डिजल्ड ऑक्सीजन सेंसर्स अबव द एबव द लिक्विड लेवल ऑफ द रिएक्शन वेसल कनेक्शन फॉर एसिड आल्काली एंटीफोम केमिकल्स एंड इनोकुलम आर लोकेटेड द बायो द बायो रिएक्टर इज यूजली डिजाइन टू वर्क एट हाई टेम्परेचर दैट इज वन फिफ्टी टू वन एटी डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड हायर प्रेसर दैट इज थ्री सेवेंटी सेवन टू फोर हंड्रेड ट्वेल्व के के पा द रिएक्शन वेसल इज ऑल्सो डिजाइन टू विच स्टैंड वैक्यूम और एल्स इट मे मे को लैब्स वाइल्ड कूलिंग The materials used for the construction of bio reactor must be non-toxic and must must withstand the repeated sterilization with high pressure steam. The bio reactor vessel is usually made up of stainless steel. It should be free from shrubbishes and stagnant areas so that the no solids or liquid liquids accumulate. Easy to clean channels and welded joints. are preferred transparent materials should be used wherever possible since it is advantageous to inspect medium and culture frequently now let's know about the operation of a of a conventional bio reactor there are five operations first is sterilization second is inoculation and sapling third is aeration fourth is control systems and fifth is cleaning now bit one by one we will discuss first is sterilization what do you mean by sterilization and details we will discuss aseptic conditions are the basic requirements for successful fermentation it is required that is the bio reactor and its uh, accessories the growth medium and the air sub supplied during fermentation must be sterile now let's know about the in situ sterilization the bio reactor filled with the required medium is injected with pressure pressurized steam into the jacket or coil surrounding the reaction vessel the whole system is heated to about 120 degree centigrade and held at this temperature for about 20 minutes in situ sterilization has certain limitations it is not energy efficient since the bio reactor has to be heated for a long period to raise the temperature of the whole system to 120 degree centigrade prolonged heating may destroy vitamins besides precipitating medium components now let's know about the continuous heat sterilization in this technique empty bio reactors is first sterilized by injecting pressurized system the medium is rapidly heated to 140 degree centigrade for a short period by injecting the pressurized steam alternatively 
द मीडियम कैन बी स्टेरिलाइज बाय पासिंग थ्रू ए हीट एक्सचेंजर हीटिंग बाय प्रेसराइज स्टीम सब्जेक्टिंग द मीडियम टू हाई टेम्परेचर फॉर ए शॉर्ट पीरियड डज नॉट प्रेसिपिटेड मीडियम कंपोनेंट्स फर्दर देर इज नो एनर्जी वेस्टेज इन कंटिन्यूस हीट स्टेरिलाइजेशन मेथड ना लेट्स नो अबाउट द इनोकुलेशन एंड सैम्पलिंग द बायो रिएक्टर विथ द ग्रोथ मीडियम अंडर आसेप्टिक कंडीशन इज रेडी फॉर इनोकुलेशन विथ द प्रोडक्शन ऑर्गेनिजम द साइज ऑफ द इनोकुलेशन इज जनरली वन टू टेन परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल वॉल्यूम ऑफ द मीडियम ए हाई इल्डिंग प्रोडक्शन स्टेन ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिजम टेकन फ्रॉम ए स्टॉक कल्चर एंड स्टॉक कल्चर इज यूज ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ फॉर्मेंटेशन सैंपल्स आर रेगुलरली डॉन ड्रॉन फ्रॉम द बायो रिएक्टर्स दिस इज रिक्वायर टू चेक द कंटेमिनेशन एंड मेजरमेंट ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट फॉर्म नाउ लेट्स नो अबाउट द एरेशन एरेशन ऑफ द फॉर्मेंटेशन मीडियम इज रिक्वायर टू सप्लाई ऑक्सीजन टू द प्रोडक्शन ऑर्गेनिजम्स एंड रिमूव कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड फ्रॉम बायो रिएक्टर्स एरेशन Aeration is the fermentation medium is required to supply oxygen to the production organisms and remove carbon dioxide from the bio reactor. The aeration system is designed for good exchange of gases. Oxygen is introduced into the at the bottom of the bio reactor through a sperger. The small bubbles of the air pass through the medium and rise to the surface. The bio reactor Usually has about twenty percent of its volume as vacant space on the upper part, which is referred to as a head space. The bio reactor has about eighty percent working volume. The gases released during fermentation accumulate in the head head space, which pass out through an air outlet. Now let's know about the air lift system of aeration. This in this type of aeration, spurgers. Purging of air is done at the bottom of the fermenter. This allows an upward flow of air bubbles. The more is the aeration capacity of the fermenter, the more is the dissolved oxygen in the medium. Further, the aeration capacity of the air lift system is directly proportional to the air flow rate and the internal pressure. Oxygen demand refers to the rate at which growing culture requires oxygen. For all the aerobic organisms, the aeration capacity should be more than the oxygen demand, or else the growth of the organism will be inhibited due to oxygen depletion. Now let's know about stirred system of aeration. The aeration capacity of the medium can be enhanced by stirring. This can be done by using impellers driven by a motor. If the aeration capacity of the stirred fermentation is proportional to the stirring speed. rate of air flow and the international internal pressure stirred fermentation are better suited than air lift fermenters to produce better aeration capacities now let's know about the control systems it is essential to maintain optimal growth and environment in the reaction vessel for maximum product formation maximal efficiency of the fermentation can be achieved by continuously monitoring the variable variables such as the ph temperature dissolved oxygen adequate mixing nutrient concentration and foam formation improved sensors are now available for continuous and automated monitoring of these variables that is on line measurement of ph most of the microorganisms employed in fermentation grow optimally between ph 5.5 and 8.5 in the bio reactor as the microorganisms grow they release metabolites into the medium which change ph therefore the ph of the medium should be continuously monitored and maintained at the tem- at the optimal level this can be done by the addition of acid or alkali base and, the, and through mixing of the fermentation contents sometimes an acid or alkaline medium component can be used to correct ph besides providing nutrients to growing microorganisms Now let's know about the temperature. The temperature control is absolutely essential for the good fermentation process. Lower temperature cause reduced product formation, while higher temperature adversely affects the growth of microorganisms. The bio reactors are normally equipped with heating and cooling systems that can be used as the as per the requirement 
to maintain the reaction vessel at optimal temperature now let's know about the dissolved oxygen oxygen is sparingly soluble in water continuous supply of oxygen in the form of sterilized air is done to the culture medium this is carried out by introducing air into the bioreactor in the form of bubbles continuous monitoring of dissolved oxygen concentration is done in the bioreactor for optimal product formation now let's know about the adequate mixing continuous and adequate mixing of the microbial culture ensures optimal supply of nutrients and oxygen besides preventing the accumulation of toxic metabolic by products good mixing also creates favorable environment for optimal and homogeneous growth environment and good product formation however excessive agitation may damage microbial cells and increase the temperature of the medium besides increased foam formation now let's know about nutrient concentration the nutrient concentration in a bioreactor is limited so that its wastage wastage is prevented in addition limiting concentrations of nutrients may be advantageous for optimal product formation since high nutrient concentrations are often associated with inhibitory effect on microbial growth it is now possible to do online monitoring of the nutrient concentration and suitably modify as per the requirements now let's know about the foam formation the media used in industrial formation fermentation is generally rich in protein when agitated during aeration it in, invariably results in front in fourth or foam formation that builds in head space of the bioreactor anti foam chemicals are used to lower surface tension of the medium besides causing foam bubbles to collapse mineral oils based on silicon or vegetable oils are commonly used as anti foam agents mechanical foam control devices referred to as mechanical foam beakers can also be used such devices fitted at the top of the bioreactor break the foam bubbles and the throw back into the fermentation medium now let's know about cleaning as the fermentation is complete the bioreactor is harvested that is the contents are removed for processing the bioreactor is then prepared for the next round of fermentation after cleaning the time taken for a turn round referred to as downtime should should be as short as possible due to large size of the bioreactors it is not possible to clean manually the cleaning of the bioreactors is carried out by using high pressure water jets or water jets from the nozzles fitted into the reaction vessel now let's know about solid substrates fermentation solid substrate fermentation or solid state the uh, there are certain fermentation processes that do not involve liquid medium for this biotechnological processes the growth of the microorganisms is carried out on solid substrates in the complete absence or almost complete absence of free water the presence of some moisture that is about 15% is necessary for solid substrate fermentation the most commonly used solid substrates for ssb ssf are cereal grains wheat bran sawdust wood shavings and several other plant and animal materials these solid substrates substrates are polymeric in nature insoluble or sparingly soluble in in water and contain concentrated sources of nutrients for growth of microorganisms ssf means solid substrate fermentation ssf is a very old traditional uh, technique carried out in many countries it is used for the production of edible mushrooms cheese soy sauce and many other fermented products composting is a good example of ssf the solid uh, solid substrate fermentation has been very popular for the production of fermented foods idli dosa dhokla 
that is bread beverages fermented fish meat yogurt cheese pickles these are the examples fermentation often makes the food more nutritious easily digestible and better in flavor for the solid substrates fermentation uh, fermentation single pure cultures mix mixed cultures or mixed organisms may be used pre treatment of substrate raw materials is sometimes done to facilitate the availability of nutrients solid substrate fermentation is normally carried out as a non aseptic process this saves new sterilization cost it is important that the substrates used in ssf have adequate spaces in between to allow good air circulation this facilitates adequate exchange of gases besides promoting heat elimination forced forced air circulation may be done to maintain optimal conditions in ssf now let's know about bioreactors for ssf bioreactors designed for solid state fermentation are much simpler compared to liquid state fermentation now let's know about the advantages of ssf first point is solid substrates fermentation ssf employs simple natural solids as the media second is low technology low energy expenditure and requires less capital investment third point is no need for sterilization less microbial contamination and easy downstream process fourth is yield of the products is reasonably high fifth is bioreactor design aeration process and effluent treatment are required simple many domestic industrial and agricultural waste can be fruitfully used in ssf now let's know about the limitations of ssf the microorganisms that tolerate only low moisture content can be used now next lim- next point is precise monitoring of ssf that means oxygen and carbon dioxide levels moisture content is not possible the organisms grow slowly and consistently there is limitation in product formation heat production creates problems and it is very difficult to regulate the growth environment now let's know about the media for industrial formation the media used for the growth of microorganisms in the industrial fermentation must contain all the elements in a suitable form of the for the synthesis of cellular substances as well as the metabolic products while designing while designing a medium several factors must be taken into consideration most of the, the most of, most important among this uh, among them is the ultimate product desired in the fermentation for growth linked products that means primary metabolites example ethanol or hydric acid the product formation is directly dependent on the growth of the micro growth of the organisms hence the medium should be such that it supports good growth on the other hand for products which which are not directly linked to the growth the substrate requirements for product formation must also be considered in the laboratory pure defined chemicals may be used for culturing microorganisms however for industrial fermentations undefined and complex substrates are frequently used for economic reasons cheaper substrates are advantageous since they minimize the production cost of the fermented products waste from agriculture and by products of other industries are generally preferred although they are highly variable in composting composition raw material raw materials used for fermentation largely depends on their cost at a particular time since there are seasonal vari- variations the choice of the medium is very critical for the successful production product formation for industrial fermentation the microorganisms in general utilize a luxury metabolism 
देयर फॉर गुड प्रोडक्ट गुड प्रोडक्शन यील्स आर एक्सपेक्टेड विथ ए अपीडेड सप्लाई ऑफ कार्बन एंड नाइट्रोजन सोर्सेस बिसाइड्स रिक्विजाइड ग्रोथ फैक्टर्स द मीडिया यूज इन फॉर्मेंटेशन प्रोसेस मे बी सिंथेटिक और क्रूड नाउ लेट्स नो अबाउट सिंथेटिक मीडिया मीडिया विथ ऑल द रिक्विजाइड कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट्स इन ए प्योर फॉर्म इन द डिजायर्ड प्रपोर्सन रिप्रेजेंट्स सिंथेटिक मीडिया यूज ऑफ दिस टाइप ऑफ मीडिया इन फॉर्मेंटेशन इज नॉट प्रेडिक्टेबल नाउ लेट्स नो अबाउट क्रूड मीडिया द नॉन सिंथेटिक मीडिया विथ नेचुरली अवेलेबल सोर्सेस आर बेटर सुटेड फॉर फॉर्मेंटेशन इन प्रैक्टिस क्रूड मीडिया विथ एन एडिशन ऑफ रिक्विजाइड सिंथेटिक कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंट्स इज आइडियल फॉर गुड प्रोडक्ट यूल्ड इन फॉर्मेंटेशन द मोस्ट फ्रिक्वेंटली यूज सब्सट्रेट्स फॉर फॉर इंडस्ट्रियल फॉर्मेंटेशन विथ स्पेशल रेफरेंस टू द सप्लाई ऑफ कार्बन एंड नाइट्रोजन सोर्सेस एंड ग्रोथ फैक्टर्स नाउ वी विल डिस्कस फर्स्ट इज सब्सट्रेट्स यूज एज कार्बन सोर्सेस कार्बन कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स कॉन्स्टिट्यूट द मोस्ट प्री डोमिनेट सोर्सेस ऑफ एनर्जी इन फॉर्मेंटेशन इंडस्ट्री रिफाइंड रिफाइंड एंड प्योर कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स सच एज ग्लूकोज एंड सुक्रोज आर रेयरली यूज फॉर इकोनॉमिक रीजन्स नाउ लेट्स नो अबाउट मोलासेस मोलासेस इज ए बाय प्रोडक्ट ऑफ सुगर इंडस्ट्री एंड इज वन ऑफ द चीपेस्ट सोर्सेस ऑफ कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स सुगर कैन मोलासेस एंड सुगर बीट मोलासेस आर कॉमनली यूज बिसाइड्स बींग रिच इन सुगर मोलासेस ऑल्सो कॉन्टेन नाइट्रोजेनियस सब्सटेंसेस विटामिन ट्रेस एलिमेंट्स दिज ऑकर्स देर ऑफकर्स वेरिएशन इन द कंपोजिशन ऑफ द मोलासेस विच मोस्टली डिपेंड्स ऑन द क्लाइमेटिक कंडीशंस एंड प्रोडक्शन प्रोसेस हाइड्रोल मोलासेस ए बाय प्रोडक्ट इन ग्लूकोज प्रोडक्शन फ्रॉम कॉर्न इज ऑल्सो यूज एज ए फॉर्मेंटेशन सब्सटेंट नाउ लेट्स नो अबाउट माल्ट एक्सट्रैक्ट माल्ट एक्सट्रैक्ट एंड आक्वेस एक्सट्रैक्ट ऑफ माल्टेड बार्ली contains about 80% carbohydrates that is glucose fructose sucrose maltose nitrogen compounds constitute around 4.5% that is proteins peptides amino acids and purines and pyrimidines now let's know about starch dextrin cellulose the polysaccharide starch dextrin and cellulose can be metabolized by microorganisms they are frequently used for the industrial production of alcohol due to its wide availability the low cost the use of cellulose for alcohol production is extensively studied now let's know about whey whey is a by product of dairy industry and is produced worldwide most of it is consumed by humans and animals they are reasonably good sources of carbon for the production of alcohol single protein vitamin b12 lactic acid and gibberellic acid storage of whey is a limited factor for the for its widespread use in fermentation industry now let's know about meth- methanol and ethanol some of the mass- microorganisms are capable of utilizing me- methanol or ethanol as carbon sources methanol is the cheapest substrate for fermentation however it can be utilized by only a few bacteria and yeast methanol is commonly used for the production of single cell protein ethanol is rather expensive however it at present it is used for the production of acetic acid now let's know about substrates as nitrogen sources the nitrogen supply to the fermentation microorganisms may come from inorganic or organic sources now in let's know about inorganic nitrogen sources ammonium salts and free ammonia are cheap inorganic nitrogen sources particularly in industrialized countries however not all the microorganisms are capable of utilizing them hence their use is limited organic nitrogen sources let's know about organic nitrogen sources urea is fairly a good source of nitrogen however other cheaper organic forms of nitrogen sources are preferred corn stick corn stick liquid liquid this is formed during starch production from corn corn stick liquid is liquid is rich in nitrogen about 4% and is very efficiently utilized by microorganisms 
इट इज रिच इन सेवेरल अमिनो एसिड्स अलानाइन वालिन मैथ्योनाइन आर्जिनाइन थ्रियोनाइन ग्लूटामेट नाउ लेट्स नो अबाउट ईस्ट एक्सट्रैक्ट दे कंटेन अबाउट एट परसेंट नाइट्रोजन एंड आर रिच इन अमिनो एसिड्स पेप्टाइड्स एंड विटामिन ग्लूकोज फॉर्मड फ्रॉम ग्लूको ग्लाइकोजन एंड टेट्राहोलस ड्यूरिंग ईस्ट एक्सट्रैक्शन इज ए गुड कार्बन सोर्स ईस्ट एक्सट्रैक्ट आर प्रोड्यूस्ड फ्रॉम बीकर्स ईस्ट थ्रू द थ्रू ऑटोलाइसिस एट फिफ्टी टू फिफ्टी फाइव डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड एंड थ्रू प्लाज्मोलाइसिस हाई हाई कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ एन एस सी एल ईस्ट एक्सट्रैक्ट आर वेरी गुड सोर्सेस फ्रॉम मेनी इंडस्ट्रियली इंपोर्टेंट माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम नाउ लेट्स नो अबाउट सो मिल आफ्टर एक्सट्रैक्टिंग द सो सोयाबीन ऑयल फ्रॉम द सोयाबीन सीड्स द लेफ्ट आउट सो रिसिड्यू इज सोया मिल इट इज रिच इन प्रोटीन्स अबाउट फिफ्टी परसेंट एज वेल एज कार्बोहाइड्रेट्स अबाउट थर्टी परसेंट कंटेंट्स सोया मिल इज ऑफन यूज इन एंटीबायोटिक प्रोडक्शन नाउ लेट्स नो अबाउट पेप्टोन्स द प्रोटीन हाइड्रोलाइसेट्स are collectively referred to as peptones and they are good sources for many microorganisms the sources of peptones include meat soy milk peanuts peanut seeds cotton seeds and sunflower seeds the proteins namely casein gelatin and keratin can also be hydrolyzed to yield peptones in general peptones derived from animal sources have more nitrogen content while those from plant sources have more carbohydrate content peptones are relatively more extensive hence not widely used in industries now let's know about the sources of growth factors some of the some of the microorganisms are not capable of synthesizing one or more growth factors such as vitamins these growth factors are very extensive expensive in pure form hence crude sources is preferred yeast extract is a rich source of almost all growth factors generally the substrates derived from plant or animal sources is a crude form are reasonably high uh, reasonably rich in mineral contents sometimes however mineral like phosphate sulfate supplements may be required now let's know about the sterilization of culture media and gases for successful fermentation it is absolutely essential to ensure first is steri- sterility of media containing the nutrients sterility of incoming and outgoing air sterility of the bioreactor and prevention of contamination during fermentation now let's know about sterilization of culture media the constituents of culture media water and containers contribute to the contamination by vegetative cells and spores the media must be free from contamination before use in fermentation sterilization of the media is most commonly achieved by applying heat and to a lesser extent by other means physical methods chemical treatment radiation now let's know about heat st- heat sterilization heat is the most widely used sterilization technique the quality and quantity of contamination composition of the media and its uh, ph and the size of the suspended particles are the important factors that influence the success of heat sterilization in general vegetative cells are destroyed at lower temperature in the in a short time that is 5 to 10 minutes however destruction of spores requires higher temperature and relatively long time spores of bacillus stereo thermophilus are the most high, heat resistant in fact this organism is exploited is exploited for testing the sterility of fermentation equipments physical method let's know about the physical methods the physical methods such as filtration centrifugation and adsorption are in use among these filtration is the among these filtration is the most widely used certain constituents like vitamins blood components antibiotics of culture media are heat liable and therefore are destroyed by heat sterilization such components of the radium are completely dissolved 
and then subjected to fit filter sterilization there are some limitations of filter uh, filtrate filtration technique first is application of high pressure in filtration is unstable for industries second is some of the media components may be lost from the media during filtration sometimes the combination of filtration and heat sterilization are applied for instance the water used for media preparation is filtered while concentrated nutrient solution is subjected to heat sterilization the filtered water is now added for appropriate dilution of the media the chemical methods like method the chemical methods and radiation procedures are not commonly used for media sterilization now let's know about batch sterilization the culture media are subjected to sterilization at 121 degree centigrade in batch volumes in the bioreactor batch sterilization can be done by injecting the stem uh, steam into the medium or injecting the steam into interior coils for the direct batch sterilization the steam should be pure and free from all chemical additives there are two advantages of batch sterilization first is damage to culture media second is high energy consumption damage to culture media alteration in nutrients change in ph and discoloration of the culture media are common second is high energy conservation it's a, it takes a few hours like 2 to 4 hours for the entire continu- contents of the bioreactor to attain the required temperature that is that is maybe 120 degree centigrade another uh, 20 to 60 minutes for the uh, actual process of sterilization followed by cooling for 1 to 2 hours all this purpose involves wastage of energy and therefore batch sterilization is quite costly now let's know about continuous sterilization continuous sterilization is carried out at 140 degree centigrade for a very short period of time ranging from 30 to 120 seconds this is based on the principle that the time required for killing microorganisms is much shorter at higher temperature continuous sterilization is carried out by directly injecting the stem or by means of heat exchangers in either case the temperature is very quickly raised to 140 degree centigrade the ment- and maintained for 30 to 120 seconds the stages of continuous sterilization process and corresponding temperature now we'll discuss the different stages are exchangers heater heat maintenance unit recovery of residual heat cooling and fermenter in the continuous sterilization process three types of heat exchangers are used the first heat exchanger raises temperature to 90 to 120 degree centigrade within 20 to 30 seconds the second exchanger further raises temperature to 140 degree centigrade and maintains for 30 to 120 seconds the third heat exchanger brings down the temperature by cooling in the next 20 to 30 seconds the actual time required for sterilization depends on the size of the suspended particles the bigger the si- bigger is the size the more is the time required the main advantage with dis- Uh, the main advantage with continuous sterilization is that about 80 to 90 degree 90% of the energy is conserved the limitation however is that certain compounds in the media medium precipitate due to very high temperature differences that occur in a very short time between sterilization and cooling the starch containing culture media becomes viscous in continuous sterilization and therefore it is not used now let's know about sterilization of air in general the industrial fermentation are carried out under vigorous and continuous aeration for an effective fermentation the air should be completely sterile and free from all microorganisms and suspended particles this is a wide variation in the quantity of suspended particles and microbes in the atmospheric outdoor air the microorganisms may range from 10 to 2000 per meter cube while the suspended particles may be 20 to 1 lakh per meter cube 
Among the microorganisms present in the air, the fungi spores of 50% and gram-negative bacteria that is 40% dominant. Air or gases can be sterilized by filtration, heat, filtration, heat, UV radiation and gas scrubbing. Among these, heat and filtration are most commonly used. Air sterilization by heat. In the early years, air was passed over electrically heated elements and sterilized. But this is quite expensive, hence not in use these days. Air sterilization by filtration. Filtration of air is the most commonly used sterilization in fermentation industries. Depth filter filters. When the air is passed through a gas in the through a gas glass pool containing depth filters, the particles are trapped and removed. This filtration technique primarily involves physical effects such as in inertia, blocking gravity, electrostatic attraction and diffusion. Glass wool filters, uh, filters can be subjected to steam sterilization and reuse. But there is a limitation in the in their reuse such glass wool rings and solidifies on steam sterilization. In recent years, glass fiber um, filter filter cartridges are being used. Now let's know about membrane cartridge filters. These are removable plates, membrane filters made up of cellulose, ester, nylon, and or poly polysulfone. Membrane cartridge filters are smaller in size, simpler for operations and replacement. The most important limitation of air sterilization is that there is no filter, filter that can remove bacteriophage. Bacteriophages are capable of cripple, crippling the industrial fermentation. Example, bacteriophage interfere in the production of glutamic acid by Corine bacterium glutamicum. Now let's know about isolation of microorganisms. There are over a million species of microorganisms widely distributed in nature. Less than 1% of the world's microorganisms have been studied. In fact, only a few hundred species are important for industrial use. The good sources for the isolation of microorganisms are so soils, lakes, and river mods. It is estimated that a gram of soil contains 10 to the power 6 to 10 to the power 8 bacteria uh, to 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 6 actinomycid spores and 10 to the power 2 to 10 to the power 4 fungal spores. The common technique employed for isolation of microorganisms are first is direct spongy of the soil Second is soil dilution. Third is gradient plate method. That is pore plate and streak plate method. Fourth is aerosol dilution. Fifth is flotation. Sixth is centrifugation. For food, the uh, sorry, the actual technique for the isolation of microorganisms depends on the source of the physical properties. Of microorganisms, the general scheme adopted for isolation, isolating microorganisms from soil or water sources are: first point is the the, the sample is diluted with sterile water to which an emulsifying agent is added. Sample is thoroughly mixed and allowed to stand at room temperature. Supernatant is diluted 10 to the power minus 1 to 10 to the power minus 10. Various culture media are inoculated with diluted uh, samples and incub incubated. Colonies from the plates are isolated and identified. The required pure strains are maintained and preserved. Enrichment method for isolation of microorganisms. The culture conditions can be appropriately modified to isolate certain types of microorganisms. For instance, thermophiles can be isolated by using high temperature while acidophiles can be isolated in acidic pH. Enrichment methods are certainly useful for quick isolation of specific types of organisms. Stains of microorganisms from unusual environments. Bacteriologists often prefer to isolate microorganisms from very 
stream and on usual environments this is done with a hope that such tests may be capable of producing new products of industrial importance the unusual environments such as cold habitats high altitudes deserts deep sea and petroleum fields are constantly being tried for this purpose Now let's know about screening of metabolites for isolation of microorganisms. The microorganisms can be tested directly for the product formation and isolation. In fact, the water or the soil samples can be directed directly used or suitably diluted for metabolites screening. Agar plates can be used for screening metabolites formed from the microorganisms. For instance, if the required product is an antibiotic, then the test system consists of the strains of organisms which inhibit the zones on the agar plates. The inhibitory activity indicates the possibly possible presence of some antibiotic being produced by the microorganisms. Another example is the isolation of microorganism organisms producing amyloses when the when grown. on agar plates containing starch and then stained with iodine amylase producing organisms can be identified and isolated now let's know about screening for new metabolites and isolation of microorganisms industrial microbiologists continue their search for newer metabolites produced by microorganisms research work is particularly directed for identifying chemotherapeutically important products for the treatment of tumors bacterial diseases and viral diseases besides several other substances example hormones enzyme inhibitors in addition uh, in addition isolation of microorganisms for improvement of food industry and for efficient degradation of the environmental pollutants and hazardous chemicals also assumes significance now let's know about preservation of microorganisms there are uh, there are distinct methods for preservation of microorganisms the most important thing is storage by refrigeration freezing and lyophilization now let's know about microbial metabolic products that is low molecular weight compounds the microorganisms possess a tremendous capacity to produce a wide range of products that have commercial value the primary and secondary metabolisms and bio, bio conversions of microorganisms with special reference to their importance for the formation of biotechnology important biotechnologically important for the formation of bio, uh, for the products now we will discuss now let's know about the microbial growth microbial growth is uh, can be uh, of can be uh, explained in two different types first is primary and second is secondary metabolism first is primary metabolism let's know about the primary metabolism primary metabolism also referred to as the trophophage is characterized by balanced growth of microorganisms it occurs when all the nutrients needed by the organisms are provided in the medium primary metabolism is essential for the for for the very ex- existence and reproduction of cells in the trophophage the cells possess optimal concentrations of almost all the micromolecules that is proteins dna and rna etc it is during the product um, period of troph- trophophage an exponential growth of microorganisms occurs several meta Occur several metabolic products collectively referred to as primary metabolites are produced in trophophage. The primary metabolites are divided into two type two groups. First is primary essential metabolites. Second second is primary metabolic end products. Let's know about the first point that is primary essential metabolites. These are the compounds produced in adequate quantities to sustain cell growth. Example: vitamins, amino acids, nucleosides. The new uh, the native microorganisms usually do do not overproduce essential 
primary metabolites such it such it is a wasteful exercise however for industrial overproduction the regulatory mechanisms are suitably manipulated now let's know about primary metabolic end products these are the normal and traditional end products of fermentation process of primary metabolism the end products may or may not have any significant function to perform in the microorganisms although they have many other industrial applications example ethanol acetone and lactic acids etc carbon dioxide is a metabolic end product of saccharomyces cerevisiae this occur, this carbon dioxide is essential for living of dough in baking industries now let's know about the disadvantages or limitations in growth due to insufficiency insufficient or limited supply of any nutrient the growth rate of microorganisms slows down however the metabolism does not stop it continues as long as the cell uh, lives leaves but the formation of products differs now let's know about the overproduction of primary metabolites excessive production of metabol uh, of primary metabolites is very important for their large scale use for a very variety of purposes overproduction of several metabolites has been successfully accomplished by eliminating the feedback inhibition feedback inhibition by using auto Uh, sorry oxo oxotropic mutants with a block in one of the steps in the biosynthetic pathway concerned with the formation of primary metabolites in this manner the end product e formation is blocked hence no feedback inhibition but overproduction of the required metabolic occurs second point is mutant microorganisms with anti metabolite resistance which in which exhibit a defective metabolic regulation can also overproduce primary metabolites now let's know about secondary metabolites as the exponential growth of the microorganism suggests that is as the trophophage ends they enter idio phase idio phase idiophase is characterized by secondary metabolism where the formation of certain metabolites referred to as secondary metabolites occurs these metabolites although not required by the microorganisms are produced in abundance the secondary metabolites however are industrially uh, very important and and are the most exploited in biotechnology uh, example antibiotics steroids alkaloids gibberellins and toxins now let's know about the characteristics of secondary metabolites secondary metabolites are specifically produced by sec- selected few or organ- microorganisms they are not essential for the growth or reproduction of organisms from which they are produced third point is environmental factors influence the production of secondary metabolites fourth is some microorganisms produce secondary metabolites as a group of micro group of compounds instead of a single one example about 35 anthracyclines are produced by single strain of streptomyces the biosynthetic pathways for most secondary metabolites are not clearly established sixth is the regulation of the formation of secondary metabolites is more complex and differs from that of primary metabolites now let's know about the functions of secondary metabolites as already stated uh, secondary metabolites are not essential for growth and multiplication of cells their occurrence and structures vary very widely several hypotheses have been put forth to explain the role of secondary metabolites two of them are now will discuss first is the secondary metabolites may perform certain functions that are beneficial for the certain uh, for the cells to survive second is the secondary metabolites have absolutely no function the production alone is uh, important for the cell whatever may be the product is now let's know about the overproduction of secondary metabolites from here we will discuss in next video because this chapter is very long 
and we can't can't explain in one video so i will make it in two parts this is the first part in from over over production of secondary metabolites we will continue from in the next video thank you now please subscribe my channel and to know more uh, about the, about the biotechnological topics thank you